It's 10 p.m. and you are welcome to News at 10 on TV3. We are live from our news hub here at Adisawe in Kanda. My name is Martin Siedudati and coming up this evening, rainstorm in Kumasi in the Ashanti region leaves scores of students of the Ashanti Man Senior High School and other persons displaced. We will take you there to the region for an update. Remember, we are live on DSTV channel 279 and streaming live on Facebook via 3news.com and also live on 3FM 92.7. But first, let's take a look at some of the stories making headlines. Member of Parliament for Ifutu constituency Alexander Afenyo Marking has called for all 23 staff of the University of Education Winneba who were dismissed, suspended or demoted to be reinstated. Speaking to journalists in Accra, he described the reinstatement of only three of the lecturers as not enough. He also rejected suggestions that overturning the sanctions against all the staff would bring indiscipline. The gender court in Sekunde in the western region has ordered for a psychiatric examination of 42-year-old Rose Mausi Fianku, who has been accused of stealing a one-year-old baby at the Takradi Market Circle. Her lover, Lawson Latte, an alleged accomplice on the other hand, was granted bail to the sum of 10,000 Ghana cities with two sureties to reappear before the court on April 26. Calm has returned to Somanya in the Yilo Krobo municipality of the eastern region after two youth groups in the town clashed with the police over frequent power cuts. Two persons sustained injuries and are receiving treatment at the Koforidia Central Hospital. The Minister of Business Development, Dr. Awal Mohammed, has charged metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies to strictly enforce sanitation bylaws. Speaking on behalf of the Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia at the inauguration of a compost recycling plant in Accra, the Business Development Minister said that is the only way to ensure the President's dream of making Accra the cleanest city in Africa to be achieved. So those are the major headlines making news in Ghana. Time now though for the big one. We go to the Ashanti region now. A rainstorm in Kumasi in the Ashanti region has caused havoc and left scores of people displaced. Hundreds of residents and students of the Ashanti Man Senior High School at Imrom have been rendered homeless while dozens of buildings have been destroyed. Benjamin Edu is our TV3 correspondent and has come through with his report. One person has been injured and is seeking medical attention after a billboard fell on a car he was driving during a rainstorm. He was trapped in the car for hours. The storm affected the Ashantiman Senior High School at Imrum in Kumasi severely. The roofing of one of the girls' dormitory was ripped off, displacing about 400 students. Headmaster of the school, Nathaniel Entry Asamwa called on the students to be calm. Which is also housing some of you girls. Now, we want all of you to relax. Already, you, some of you have sent messages to your parents. And uh, they got alarmed. Adding to the false reportage that also went on air. That uh, the school is, uh, is in flames. There is fire outbreak here. And that uh, we have about 32 of our girls who have collapsed at the, at the various hospitals. Now, the situation is under control. Several giant billboards were uprooted in Ashtown, Aswase Stadium, Afonkwanta. Swami ran about an Anglonga Junction. 
metal containers and kiosks serving as shops and places of abode were swept away by the rainstorm. Electricity supply has been cut in most of the affected areas as power cables torn, while trees also fell on about 15 containers and caused destruction to vehicles. He was there when he had a call from his director that some trees have been uprooted at his workplace. He quickly rushed to the scene and saw trees had fallen on cars and destroyed properties. Not so long, NADMO and fire service came around to the rescue. The regional NADMO director, Kwabna Century, debunked allegations of a fire outbreak at the Shantiman Senior High School. We came here purposely for the misinformation that was on the social media that there's a fire outbreak at Asantiman Senior High School, a whole lot. So I came here as early as 6 a.m. I was here last night. I couldn't see anything because of the rain and the, all the electricity were off. I couldn't see anything. So I decided to come early in the morning. I called the headmaster to assess the situation. All right, let's speak to our correspondent, Benjamin Edu, who's joined us on the line. Benjamin, good evening. Thank you for joining us. What can you report regarding where the students of the Asantemain Senior High School are sleeping? At least by now, we know uh, for secondary schools, prep is over and they should be having some place to sleep. What can you report regarding uh, yesterday's rainstorm? Martin, the issue is that, uh, you know, at Asantemain Senior High School, they haven't three female dormitory blocks. Right. And where the incident happened is uh, that place supposed to be uh, the home accounts department because of the free senior high school and the number of students at the female dormitory block, they have converted that particular stretch as a, a new female dormitory blocks. So where they have, at, at the moment, where 400 students are supposed to be lawyer at that particular point. So what happened yesterday is not bad news for as I'm in high school, as I'm speaking with you. And uh, uh, those foreign students are supposed to be shared with other uh, uh, hostels uh, or let's see, other dormitories because they are supposed to be other uh, dormitory boards where these students are supposed to be lodged. So right, but Benjamin, we yeah. know looking at the numbers, do you think they will all fit into where they've been sent for now? And, and there are already concerns about health risks. What can you tell us regarding that? In fact, uh, when we went there this morning, our assessment indicated that uh, the place is safe for the students. Even though uh, there were a lot of female students at that, those uh, uh, dormitories that I'm talking about, uh, for now, it's safe for other students who are supposed to move from where the incident occur to the new dormitory block. Okay. What have the school authorities told you regarding, you know, property that was damaged and how they can make sure that school activity returns to normal? In fact, uh, the headmaster of the school, Mr. Natalian, uh, and she has been speaking to the students of the where the incident happened. I, I'm talking about the, the, the dormitory but where uh, that particular incident happened. It's, advice, you know, it's, a, national, uh, it's a, a natural disaster. It can happen to any other uh, school. Right. And he been urging them that uh, it's a natural disaster. It can happen to any, any school. So uh, they should hold on. Uh, I've I, I been told that uh, let's supposed to be the end of term exams. And the students were seriously uh, preparing for their end of term exams. And the incident happened at the time that incident, uh, that incident happened. They were all at the prep. And none of the students. Uh, Okay, uh, nothing happened to any of the students. And you've been told that uh, there was a fire disaster at that particular uh, dormitory block. That, that one has been debunked by the official from the NADMO, the mm. school authorities, and then the officers from the Ghana Education Service. So for now, CAM has returned to a Santa Maria Senior High School. When he went there, this evening around 6 uh, p.m., after uh, the supper, uh, Almost all those girls who were affected by last night's disaster, they have been fully accommodated. Okay. NADMO, together with the KMA officials, have 
provide enough mattresses for those uh, girls who are affected. Mm. So, as I'm saying, Syria has some scheme with you. Everything is in, in order. And the uh, officials from NADMU and then the GES together with KME. Okay. I also happy about the work at the moment. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for this update from the Asantiman Senior High School. Benjamin Edu is our reporter there from the Ashanti region. And that report follows what happened. And if you saw the earlier pictures, some of the roofs on the campus were ripped off by the rainstorm from last night. And um, the, headmaster, the headmaster of the school has come out to deny the fact that some of the students were affected. No student was injured. Nobody has died. And there are 32 alleged uh, students who were collapsed, that is all falsehood and that all the students are safe. The situation, the headmaster says, is under control and this has been confirmed by the headmaster who says that, um, this has been confirmed by our reporter who says that as of this evening, all the students have been given fair accommodation for the time being while they try to sort out the, 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 the damage that was caused by the the rainstorm let's find out whether or not this is supposed to uh, be uh, just an interim measure in salvaging the situation let's speak to frank dodu he's nadmo metro director for the ashanti region good evening sir thank you for joining us hello mr dodu hello good evening Yes, we, we understand that uh, your outfit has distributed some mattresses to help the students of the Santiman Senior High School. What next is NADMO doing to help the school resettle the students ahead of their exams and then also yes. uh, while they salvage? Thank the you very much. C can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. All right, so my, my question was, we have been told that you distributed some mattresses and you were there yes. with the school authorities to try and help the situation. What next from yes. the NADMO perspective to help the school get back to normal? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. I don't know if it's giving me feedback. But your, based on your question, the next, the next step being taken. Yes. Yeah, on the immediate, what measures that we've put in is just as your reporter gave out there. The immediate steps being taken is making sure that the students, where the dormitories roofs were ripped off, they've been provided for. That is the immediate term one that has been put down. Right this afternoon, the chief executive of the Metro, together with my regional director and that of the fund also went around visiting those dormitories and places that were affected. Immediate measures also have been put in place, put our report together, rightly submitted to region, which will be carried out immediately so that necessary steps will be taken to address this issue on campus. We are told hundreds of uh, people, not just the students, but then other citizens uh, were also, or residents were also affected by this rainstorm. Uh, what have you been able to do for them, uh, especially those that have been rendered homeless? We have what on the grounds are safe havens. Over, over here, we have what we have safe havens. Immediately, Hello? Hello, yes, I can hear you. Uh, immediate steps that has been taken out there. It's helping getting people who have been affected by the rains on safe havens. Those that they don't have a relative to patch with, we do provide that of churches, give us the help, which we make sure all these people are being put at safe place within the immediate term, a week to go so that they get along with their family or their related ones, and those do not have. We go extra mile by providing the immediate blanket and things in place for them to have their bowl while we have the immediate terms to make sure that we provide roofs among others to assist them get back into 
Elsewhere, elsewhere around the world, we know that when such natural disaster happen, it is the, um, the fire service that work in hand with other state security agencies to try and resolve the situation or get people some safety. In this, in this case, are you working with the National Fire Service, for instance? Which other state agencies are you working with to at least clear the billboards that are falling, move things out of the way so traffic can flow, that life can return to normalcy? And how has the collaboration been? Exactly, exactly the case. Um, exactly the case. The rain did started 10 p.m. And over the 10 p.m. that it did started, that very moment, a call was placed in for the Metro Fire Director, who also joined me in the field. Then we started immediately. We were on the rounds with the Fire Metro team, with the attender also on the ground, which over the night, we were able to get all trees off streets, blockades. Then most of these billboards have also been lifted. Right even this evening, sound that we feel for a trek are still being uprooted this evening. These are some of the measures that we took and that has been done on the ground. Way back last year, an exercise was undertaken on these billboard activity, which some of the billboards were cranked down because of the position, the situation, and the wind direction. Most of these advertising companies did raise alarm to that effect, but all was in pressing towards these situations that we find ourselves. Right. And as you could witness, most of even these billboards have a rooted family thing, but yes, so the wind did. Hmm. The way forward in these things that we put out there, some of these locations can't not be given out basically on advertising grounds. Okay. There are other securities that we need to take into consideration. Are you going to make sure you enforce so these laws? Are you going to make sure you enforce this law? Because not just in Kumasi, but across most cities in Ghana, billboards are just put up anywhere, some blocking major roads and, and you know, for on, on, oncoming vehicles. How are you going to make sure that we don't have a recurrence of this? And are you going to make sure the law is followed to the letter? Yes. Yes, you can see you can see the current situation of NADMO in positioning ourselves as prevention is the main cure. The systems being put in place currently are those that is going to take X further. What is it that we are talking about? The planning level of all MMDH has a rep of NADMO represented on. And the engineering unit which this advertising level under, there are more than needs to be looked down, approved from security perspective, right. in protection as part of our prevention measures to okay. help. So okay. when you are at that level, at the planning level, at the district assembly, metropolitan or municipal, at that very level, you have that planning with them. Okay. So once it falls under the engineering part of it, how is being positioning the security nature of the people around all need to be factored. Okay. Due Thank you. to the weather climate change that we're going to have. And right. even those under high tension need to be cautioned. Thank you so much for making time to speak with us. Frank Dodu uh, is the NADMO Metro Director in the Ashanti region, helping us understand what efforts they have put in place to make sure that life returns to normalcy, the assistance they've given to those who have been rendered homeless following last night's rainstorm. Uh, fortunately, no lives have been lost, but then people uh, have been rendered homeless. Some got injured, and uh, we hope that um, uh, all the state institutions that have a role to play in this get to work immediately. Um, the concern also was that of the secondary school, the Asantiman Senior High School. We are told that normalcy has returned somewhat. They found accommodation for the pupils there. So if you're a parent, if you're living in Kumasi, eh, especially around where the storm, hand, uh, the storm ha happened, do send us a, a report or let us know how you're faring uh, following that 
uh, storm from last night. This is news at 10 on TV3. We'll stay in the Ashanti region a while longer. Uh, and Chiboy Siako is a reporter with Akumaya FM and would also want to ask him to help us understand from the perspective of the citizens, how has it been uh, almost 24 hours after the rainstorm from last night? Um, and Chiboy Siako, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. How are residents recovering from last night's rainstorm? And, and what can you tell us about the streets, the areas, and, and places that trees and billboards fell? Have they all been cleared? Uh, the situation has not been good for residents in Marcy. And for today, the issue has affected, uh, the situation has affected academics, uh, uh, activity. Uh, students have to be uh, stay at various places to ensure that uh, they salvage their effect issues and other things uh, because the situation has affected them and they have to manage and ensure that everything they salvage everything that was affected and right. the guest part uh, administrator mr richard uh and uh, and the regional Martin metropolitan chief executive and the regional network coordinator also came in this afternoon to assess the situation and see how best they can also do to ensure that academic works also continue from next week. So this case, and uh, Mr. Richard uh, Boadu, the Get Fund Administrator, assured that by next week, by close of next week, they are going to ensure that the roofs are being repaired for academic works to continue. And the situation now here is that it's not only a Santiman school, uh, a Santiman Senior High School was the only the school that was affected. Uh, Kumasi Girls Senior High School, T.I. Homedia, St. Louis Training College, and Kunedu here at Basic School, and some other basic schools could be turned up, up to about 10 schools in Kumasi metropolitan area has been affected with this uh, rainstorm yesterday night. Right. Thank you for that uh, succinct report. Oscar and a reporter with our sister station, Akuma FM in Kumase. This is News at 10 on TV3. We are also live on 3FM 92.7 and streaming live on Facebook as well. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly with some more stories. Welcome back to News at 10 on TV3. Staying with issues of natural disasters and uh, about 45 houses were also destroyed by a rainstorm at Sokore Ando in the whole municipality of the Volta region. Over 150 people have also been rendered homeless. Roofs of several homes, churches and a classroom block were ripped off by the rainstorm. Property worth thousands of cities were destroyed. The extent of damage was enormous with education material recently donated, all washed Rest away move. by the rains. Victims are now putting up with families and friends. The victims say Nadmo is yet to intervene and support them. The Member of Parliament for Ho, Benjamin Kodo and a team visited the victims to console them and presented 10 bundles of roofing sheets. Away from that, a number of senior police officers have been promoted to the rank of commissioners by the police administration. Top on the list is the Director General of the Police CID, DCOP Mameya Tiwa Adodankwa, who was promoted to the rank of DCOP on October 27, 2017. Now, COP Mameya Tiwa Adodankwa joined five other deputy commissioners at the apex rank in the police service. They are Director General of Finance, George Tufour, Director General of Services, Alex Amponsa Esiama, Director General of Police Operations, George Alex Mensa, Eastern Regional Commander Alphonse Du Amampa, and the Northern Regional Police Commander Timothy Yosa Bonga. The promotions take effect from April 1, 2019. A memo signed by the Inspector General of Police, David Asante Pietu, also elevated three assistant commissioners to the ranks of deputy commissioner. They are Francis Abuaje Nyakon, Enes Kwabina Uusu, and Felix Ousu Ajiman. The Accra Regional Operations Commander, Chief Superintendent Kwesi Ofori, has also been promoted to the rank of assistant commissioner, along with Faustina Ejewa Kudia and Kofi. 
And that'll be it for the bulletin. Thank you very much for watching. There is more news on our website, 3news.com. My name is Martin Asiedu Data. You have a good evening as always. Stay positive. Bye for now.